In my opinion, whether you're new to the Switch, been around for a while, or just looking to buy games for somebody else, there can be a lot of factors to help decide whether you should buy a game physically or digitally. Whether that's eShop sales, loaning out physical games, using game sharing for digital games, physical collector's editions, or a whole lot more, the Switch is arguably the most versatile gaming console to date, so not only is the way that you play up to you, but now the question is how to make your way to play the most convenient and cost-effective if possible. Let's talk about it. So in this video, we'll be comparing buying Nintendo Switch games digitally and physically based on several criteria. And while there are purists on one side or another, there are definitely arguments to be made for both. So let's get into it. But for sure, one of the primary factors is going to be cost. As we're buying games, as with most other purchases, the goal is to get the most bang for your buck. So in that case, if you're wanting to get the most explosives for your male deer, the most games for your money, one super valuable resource is DekuDeals.com. It's well known, but not quite ubiquitous. So you may have heard of it before, but maybe not. I'd say it's generally possible to find good deals for games, both physically or digitally. But this site compares the cost for a specific game across all different retailers, including the Nintendo eShop. And it even tells you the lowest price point the game has ever been. So you can know if you should wait even longer for a sale if it's not quite reached that point again. But as a general rule of thumb, the base price point for digital games is set according to the physical release if they have one at all. So if the game launches with both, the price has to be the same on both fronts. But when the discounts come, typically they end up being deeper digitally than physically down the road. So if you're willing to wait, digital is probably the way to go. On the other hand, if you're looking to buy one of those games at launch, the digital price has to be full price because of the retail releases. But there are some retailers that'll intentionally lower their prices, like Walmart, for example, so that you come in and buy the game and then, you know, hopefully leave with socks or something. The price factor is certainly an important one, and in broad strokes, digitally typically ends up being cheaper than physically down the road. That's obviously not even taken into account. Use games whose prices can vary wildly, or, you know, just being able to give someone a game for free. And that brings us to the next factor, game sharing. If even one other person that you know or like or something has a Switch and plays it often, there's a good chance that at some point you're going to want to loan or trade or give a game to them, or uh, urge them to give one to you. And the good news is whether you buy your game digitally or physically, there are ways to share them either way. But there are caveats to both of these, so you'll have to decide which one is best for your situation. Physical games can be shared exactly the same way they always have. You buy a box with a cartridge in it, you give that cartridge to Joe, and you say, Joe, play this game. And he says, why suddenly? You're both very polite people. And that's it, right? Right? Well, not always. Usually, the whole game's just on the cartridge and that's exactly what you do. But sometimes you'll see the phrase download required on the box and that means probably you can't just share it with somebody or resell it. This could be one of two things. Either it means that some of the game is on the cartridge but some of it has to be downloaded like the Spyro Reignited trilogy or the 2K games that came recently. Then other times it means the full game is just a download code and there's not even a cartridge in there at all like Overwatch. So in the case of Overwatch, unless you want a box to put on your shelf, don't even bother. And with Spyro or the 2K games, it's kind of worth it if you just want to save the extra bit of space on your SD card. Well, that's kind of iffy. Otherwise, though, physical games, yeah, you're just sharing them normally. And on the other side with digital games, you may think you can't share them at all, but that's actually not even the case either. I rely on this functionality fairly often. The big picture is if you share your Nintendo Switch login information with someone you trust, someone you trust, don't just be giving it around, that's silly. They can create a profile and log into that account, download some of your games, and play them through your profile. Of course, there's caveats as to how this works, but for real life examples, AJ played almost all of Fire Emblem through my account, and I'm playing Paper Mario now through his. So let me tell you a bit more about how it works. The main purpose of it is for you to be able to play your game on multiple Switches if you have them. So Nintendo is fully aware of this functionality and that it can be used by multiple people, so they implemented some safeguards to make sure it doesn't get too taken advantage of, but you can still use it to just try out other people's games, which is fantastic. I love it for that reason. And the setup steps are pretty easy. Number one, your friend on their Switch creates a profile with whatever information. When they're prompted to, they add your Nintendo login information to that profile. And it'll be like, are you sure you wanna do this? And you'll be like, <laughs> Yes. Once they've got your account on there, they can go to the eShop through your account and go to re-download games and download 
whatever digital games you've bought in the past. So then now you've got your games on your Switch, they've got your games on their Switch, and if you wanna play them, you can play yours whenever you want, you'll never be interrupted. But if they're playing it on their account and then you start playing anything when connected to the internet, it'll kick them off which makes sense. You can get around this by playing on airplane mode on the primary switch. That's what I did with Fire Emblem when AJ was playing it. But I think the best use case for this isn't for playing through full games. It's just for trying out other games to see what you might wanna buy yourself. So which of these game sharing scenarios is better? I think it totally depends. If you've got somebody that lives far away, obviously you're not gonna mail them your physical copy or a friend that just wants to try out a bunch of stuff, but not play through anything that they could be kicked off of, Digital's the way to go, but otherwise, if I'm like, hey, I've played Breath of the Wild, I'd like you to play Breath of the Wild, I want all of you to play Breath of the Wild. Then just get it physically and lend it to them that way. It's very easy. But now on to a very important one for a lot of people, collecting. There's a huge convenience factor to digital games, which I'll talk about in the final segment. But no doubt if you're wanting to collect games, physical is the way to go. But a lot of publishers are really leaning away from the full physical game experience. They're taking out manuals, they're sometimes taking out full game cartridges just to have some kind of retail space so people will buy games. Sometimes they'll make special editions for certain games like Xenoblade or Link's Awakening or something, but those are usually pretty expensive. But then there are a couple companies that are picking up the slack in a wonderful way. I got these two games sent to me by Super Rare Games a couple weeks ago. And while I'm having a good time with the games themselves, the method behind the madness is what I really want to talk about here. Both Super Rare Games and Limited Run Games run on a similar principle. Indie games as a whole over the past decade have become a really huge part of what makes video games great, but unfortunately a lot of them really can't justify having a retail presence. Most of the time to be in Walmart or Best Buy or whatever, you need to produce a certain amount of copies and ship them out to all these stores. And the problem with that is if you make 10,000 copies of your game, but you only sell 3,000 of them, then that's a huge loss on your side. But along come these companies that print a limited run of these games, making them inherently super rare and ensuring that there is in fact a return on investment. And not only that, but there's also really good curation in these cases because while the Nintendo eShop really isn't curated super well anymore, there's a lot of garbage on there. Super Rare Games and Limited Run will only go with games that are really well established and they believe in. And in addition, they don't skimp on what's included in the package either. Let me show you. So here are these two games that I got, Graceful Explosion Machines, kind of like a shoot 'em up But in here, you get a sticker, that's nice. And then also, they have trading cards in each of them. There's only five total different cards for each game and three of them come with the game. So I got these three numbers one, two, and five, and somebody has three and four out there. So if you'd like to trade for three and four, hit me up. And of course there's the cartridge itself and maybe even better, the manual. These days we don't get manuals ever at all. So as we go through here, like look at that, it's full color print. I don't know. It's just really nice to have things to actually look through. Maybe it's something that if you're new to games, you don't really care about or have much of an appreciation for, but it's something that down the road, this will be valuable as a collector's item for one thing, but then also it's just more exciting to open up than not having all this stuff. So all in all, whether you want to display a game or just have something more fun to open, or even just make sure that in 20 years you'll still have a game cartridge to play because the eShop may just go down, I don't know. These are some additional benefits for physical. And a quick honorable mention before I get to the last big reason, these days whether I buy digital or physical depends on a number of different factors, but one situation that I think is always better to go physical for me is gifts. It's probably mostly pretty self-explanatory, but it's just more fun to unwrap a present that's a box with a game in it instead of, I don't know, a download card or a picture of a game downloaded on your Switch. But the last real factor for me on deciding whether to buy a physical or digital game is the genre. At this point, you either already totally get what I mean or you don't yet, but you're about to. But if you're buying a multiplayer game, you probably don't want to pop in a cartridge for it. Not because it's too much work, although somehow it feels like a lot of work, but mostly because you may go over to a friend's house and want to play Smash but forgot the cartridge at home. Or be laying in bed and wanna play just a little bit of Mario Kart and realize that your cartridge is in the living room. I've been playing a lot of Clubhouse games recently, and to be honest, a lot of that starts with like, I'm just gonna play one game of Yacht Dice, and then all of a sudden I'm trying to beat just the intermediate difficulty of Renegade, and I can't, cause it's, I seriously, I beat Go on the hardest difficulty in like the first or second try, and I can't even get to the hardest difficulty of Renegade. It's dumb. I don't like it. I mean, I do, but I don't.
Renegade aside, obviously those are some kinds of games that you might want to buy digitally, but what about physically? Because I think there's a case to be made for some of these. For me, anything that I'd want to be my main single player game for a certain stretch of time, I'd probably want to buy physically. So Breath of the Wild, Octopath Traveler, Fire Emblem Three Houses, if it weren't for AJ. These are titles that I'll play a lot for a while, then as soon as I'm done with them, I'm kind of done with them for a while. I usually don't like to have more than one of that kind of game at a time, so I may save and hop over to Animal Crossing for a bit, but I'm coming back to that game until I'm done with that game, and then I'm putting it away, and then it's probably gonna live in there for a while. Unless I loan it to somebody, that could happen. It's also just nice having something in the cartridge slot. It kind of makes the Switch feel whole, like a full package, you know? So after all that, what is better, physical or digital? If you've made it this far, you probably know that there's no one single answer, for me at least. I think it totally depends on a lot of these factors. How much storage do you have available? What's the price of either option? Do you want to resell it or share it with someone? Is the physical version really good, like Super Rare Games, or kind of pointless, like Overwatch? And lastly, how do you intend to play it? Like I said in the last section, for me, I like having a main game that's physical, and then pretty much everything else that I'll dabble in or play with other people be digital, but I also like physical games as a gift, even if it's less convenient. But that's what I think. What do you think? If you had to pick only physical or only digital, which would it be? Let me know that in the comments. And also, I'm going to run a poll on Twitter and we'll talk about that in our podcast tomorrow. So let me know over at, at Parker Deal on Twitter. And uh, I don't know, we'll see what you have to say. But we'll take some of those comments, talk about them on the podcast. And also, while you're down there, be sure to subscribe to Fanatics 4, hit the bell for notifications, and like the video for more like this every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time here on Fanatics 4. And that's about it for me. See you next week.